just want him to explain again the eleven uh, obstacle. <laughs> just to explain the eleven obstacle of the chanting the holy name, indulgence of imagination. <laughs> in the in the obstacle of chanting the holy name, indulgence of imagination. Om Gana Timananda Sakya Nandana Sarakaya Sakshun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama So Leoni is asking uh, to hear about this obstacle in chanting the holy name that is the indulgence in imagination. So, the principle behind this obstacle and avoiding this obstacle is extremely important to, thing to understand. Because <clears throat> people think that with my material mind I have to imagine or visualize something. Of the which is transcendental. It's, so this is already a category mistake. Because the material mind, the material mind cannot accommodate or conceive of anything which is transcendental, because the mind is material and transcendental things are nirgun. Now, if we want to go into the state of the dharana, concentration, if you want to go into the state of the dhyan, meditation, and gradually go into samadhi, then one will have to the control the chitta vrittis. That means the oscillations within the mind. Now, when we imagine something, it's not a new creation. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Narad Muni explains that no person can think of something that they have not experienced either in this life or a previous life. Uh, just digest that for a moment. Because our, our uh, ego tells us that I am going to create something new. I am very creative and I am making something new that was never ever happened before. But it's completely wrong. We have for our thoughts a limited palette. Just like an artist can only paint a picture using the colors that he has. He cannot paint with colors he does not have. So simply, our thoughts are always uh, repeats of a previous experience. Or it may seem that something is new or creative there because there can be the new combinations of elements of previous experience. For example, you can imagine a flying horse. Yeah. And uh, 
you probably not you may not have experienced a flying horse but anyway you have experienced a horse and you've experienced a bird and these two impressions you mix together and now you imagine a flying horse Например, когда они видели летающую лошадь, вы видели лошадей и видели птиц. И вы просто соединяете крылья, и лошадь, и все, теперь Пегас появился. But the conditioned souls in this world have no experience of God. Но у обусловленной души вы не имеете никакого восприятия Господа. So when they try to uh, visualize God, и когда обусловленная душа пытается представить, вообразить себе Господа, then they actually have to go into the intelligence goes into the palette of the subconscious mind to find some impressions and bring them forward. So, vikalpa or imagination is a, also um, a function which is combined with the function of smriti, memory. The, the buddhi intelligence has uh, five vrittis functions. First is the praman, a valid perception. So when you look at something, then the buddhi causes a transformation of the psychological body to create an image of that. So let's say you see a, you see a pineapple. So then the buddhi is causing transformation of the chitta to recreate that and your soul is The soul is actually seeing the model of that in your own chitta. Then the buddhi will uh, have the function of bringing out from the subconscious mind a previous experience of that. И затем Будхи из подсознания берет uh, то, то, что в нем уже лежит, предыдущий опыт. And uh, a word which was connected in your previous experience. И слово, которое связано с предыдущим опытом. So then, by bringing that forward, it will come in your mind, this is a pineapple. Because first you perceived it, and then you made a match with the past experience, and then you identified it. And so that is called Praman, or a valid perception. То есть вы видите, то есть вы что-то видите, например, ваше сознание также находит слово, предыдущий опыт в подсознании, и в это Bhagavatam, the word Praman is not used for this function. The word is used Nishchai, mm -hmm. which means ascertainment, just ascertaining that you get a certain certainty of what the object is. Ascertainment, that you ascertain, like you identify what it is. <coughs> Nishchai. <coughs> no, Bhagavatam. Inside. This function is not called Brahman in Bhagavatam, it's called Nishchai, or the ascertainment of the identity of an object. So then the next function is called uh, of Bodhi is Asmita. And uh, it means accepting the Mm. instrumental functions of the senses to be the self. Literally, it says that to, to think that the seer is the same as the instruments of seeing. Uh, 
the Tasiya, the Tasiya that means the conscious being who is seeing. The Tasiya is identifying with these instruments of seeing. If you, if you have the virtual reality goggles and you're playing a video game, so then you're seeing things from the perspective of whatever the software is showing you. You're not in a car or in a boat or wherever it's saying. <laughs> and uh, if someone will shoot you and then you die, you did not die. Only your perception is, uh, these things are manifest to perception. You are thinking, what this uh, power of perception is myself. Instead of understanding that you are Shakshi. The witness, the witness of your sensory functions. So we can say that the asmita is the op opposite of shakshitva. So this, this, the, it's the buddhi that creates this uh, function of ask me, I am this body and mind. And what the body and mind are doing, that's what I do. Then there is a smriti. Smriti means memory. And that's essentially the retrieval. Uh, the, the, the buddhi serves the function to retrieve impressions from the subconscious mind Uh, to the conscious mind. And then, uh, vikalpa, vikalpa means that uh, memory, imagination means memories are used. To form conceptions which don't have a corresponding They don't have a corresponding reality. So, example is like if you let's just take in the Western conception. The idea is that the sun is fixed and the earth is moving. So let's just take that to be our base. So then if you say the sun is rising, actually it's not, because the world was turning. And the sun was not moving at all, like this. So, The conceptions, words and conceptions which are formed, which don't correspond. It's an idea in your mind, but it doesn't correspond to the actual reality. It's called a vikalpa. Then the fourth and fifth function of the body is nidra or sleep. Okay. So, um, All these uh, functions of buddhi are the rajasic or tamasic. <coughs> the element of buddhi itself is itself rajasic. Now try to understand, if you are doing meditation, and our goal is actually to serve and love Krishna, Our goal is to serve and love Krishna. But concomitantly, incidentally with that, as we are advancing, then the Rajas and Tamas in the mind is going down. So, 
When you uh, chant mantra, it takes you out from the holy name. Then the mind should be completely arrested by the mantra. <laughs> like it is said in Srimad Bhagavatam, when Srila Vyasadeva went into a trance and realized Krishna. Bhakti Yogi Namanasi Samyak Pranahite Mele Pasar Purushaku Name Amchatara Pasrayam that yesterday he went into the trance of Bhakti Yoga and the Samyak Pranahite Amale, his pure mind, that means it was, there was no rice and tamas there, Pranahite means was completely the still, completely stopped. Then, in his clear mind, the Swarup Shakti was reflected there. Because when mind is still becomes like a mirror, and you can begin to see the form of God. So, imagination is the opposite of that. You are trying to the, come to the stage where the mind is completely still, peaceful and free from rajas and tamas. And at the same time, if you are trying to do uh, uh, kalpana, imagination, you are taking the rajasic buddhi and digging around in your subconscious mind, which is the opposite of making the mind peaceful. И это полная противоположность, чем если мы пытаемся, когда мы пытаемся медитировать, мы должны успокоиться, чтобы чьи-то была полностью, полностью спокойной и умиротворенной. И в то же время мы начинаем воображение, вот эту векалку, которая вытаскивает что-то там из подсознания, и у нас как бы это встает в противоречие такое, а то другому мешает. So, you to understand it very graphically. И это нужно понять очень четко. This going towards a state of meditation is the gradual subsidence of all the, the psychological turbulence, the chitta vittis. And on the other hand, imagination is the rajasic buddhi digging around in the subconscious mind and then bringing different impressions into the conscious mind. И нужно понять, что воображение это наоборот. Мы своим сознанием залезаем в подсознание и достаем оттуда что-то такое частичное. So you cannot find what lies in the east by going in the west. The, the, the imagination and meditation are opposite directions. Мы не можем взять что-то, что лежит слева, и если нам нужно что-то слева, мы не можем взять это справа. То есть это разные вещи, и мы должны понять, что воображение и медитация разные. Now, what's really important to understand is that why does a person indulge in imagination? Почему люди воображают? Because they don't believe in the Vastu Shakti of the mantra. So that's why this same problem is solved by in the verse Vastu Shakti to contain them. So that's, that's one motivation. A person indulges in the imagination because they don't really believe that Nam Prabhu himself will appear hmm, from the Mool Adha Chakra as a, as a Vritti, as an Aprakrita, transcendental Vritti and in the, in the uh, Anahata Chakra take over the psychological functions and manifest the vision of God. They don't believe it and so they try to substitute with the, their own Rajasic Vikalpa. И люди просто не верят в могущество и силу святого имени Махамантры, хотя на самом деле Махамантра, она входит в, как бы, ну, соприкасается с Мулакхали чакрой, в принципе, тем, когда поднимается до Анахата чакры, так, ну, и потом уже человек может получить реализацию, но люди не верят в это, они думают, надо бы воображать. So, there's another reason also, and that is that, uh, we will die without entertainment. 
Everyone wants to be in a state of constant amusement. And that is increasing more and more and more now, especially with social media. In previous times, people had a much more simple life. И раньше, в предыдущие времена, у людей была намного более простая жизнь. И фермеры знали, они должны просто упорно и терпеливо работать на земле. And then he has to plant the seed. Они должны посадить себе семечко, вырастить растения. His crop will start to grow. So in natural life, life in nature, then we understand that actually things are uh, out of our control. We can only be in a partnership with nature and patiently we can work. We have to work hard but also uh, we have to wait for nature to reciprocate and Send the result. И вот точно так же просто мы должны понимать, что мы тоже часть природы. То есть в природе все происходит постепенно, шаг за шагом. И у нас тоже должна быть такая простая жизнь. Мы понимаем, что мы постепенно прогрессируем, потому что мы часть природы. Мы также развиваемся, работаем, получаем результаты. И терпение просто не обходится. Но сейчас у всех просто такая гиперстимуляция. Because they can have unlimited types of entertainment at any moment. They can have 20, 100 types of entertainment at the same time. Before, if you wanted to write a letter to someone, you had to take a pen and a paper, and then you write it by hand and get the stamp, put it in the post, and then wait for two weeks to do it to get to the other side of the world. And then the person will read it and there, and then another two weeks. So it would take one month and then for people on the other side of the world to talk to each other. But now you can talk to 20 people in different countries all over the world at the same time with all your chat tabs open. <laughs> like it's Например, раньше, чтобы написать письмо, вам надо было бы взять бумагу, там, перо или ручку, поставить штамп, отправить на почту, дождаться, пока это куда-нибудь там в Америку улетит, потом человек прочитает, ответит, это занимает месяц. Но сейчас вы можете быть с десятками людей, которые там во всех просто концах мира, у вас открыты все WhatsApp, Viber, Facebook, Telegram, и все, что хотите. And we cannot say that the ability to communicate has increased the quality of the communications. Но мы не можем сказать, что вот это увеличение возможности общаться с кучей людей в разных концах света улучшили именно навык общения, качество общения. If you read the correspondence of the persons from the two centuries ago, если вы почитаете письма, которые были написаны 200 лет тому назад, or maybe Ralph Waldo Emerson was writing a letter, Ralph Waldo Emerson, or Madame Blavatsky, or anyone, and you read. They are letters, they just left private letters to a person. And they, everyone is writing like kind of poetry, so beautiful. And now people, they don't even use words, they use emojis. So now they become like monkeys. You can see the monkey, and they don't talk to each other, they just... <laughs> they just make faces and they communicate by this. So now everyone is become communicating like monkeys. Uh, so uh, this is uh, promoting more and more rajas, passion in the mind. The mind is restless and needs to be stimulated and entertained all the time. So, you know, our Chaitanya Mahabhu, he said, Brahmanda Brahmati Kon Bhagavan Ji Guru Krishna Prasadipai Bhakti Lata Beach. A fortunate person who is wandering for many lifetimes in this world receives the seed of bhakti from a guru. Uh, 
а, а, что именно удачливые джимы, они, они встречают в своей, в своей жизни гуру, и он дает им семя отолкнуться. И это вишеш санскар, то есть это семя желания служить Кришне. Мали мои сейбит кориаропан, then that person becomes like a gardener, like a farmer. And he has to give water to that seed that the Guru has given. И Гуру дает такому ученику семя, но ученик должен быть как очень терпеливый фермер, который каждый день поливает эту семечку и ждет, пока она вырастет. After some time, the seed begins to sprout. И через какое-то время это семя дает росточек. And it grows. It goes beyond the, the sphere of earth, beyond Swargalok, heaven, Mahalok, Janok, Tapalok. И эта семечка растет, оно становится превосходит сферу так, земли, сварга, локи, ранг, райских планет, там, в локи. That means as you chant, you transform, you become like a devata, like a devata. <laughs> Это значит, что когда вы вспеваете, вы становитесь просто как полуголовка. The devatas, they have a much more subtle book. У девата преобладает садку в углу благости. So they are more intelligent. Они более разумные. They are more graceful. Более милые. So you should be transforming like a devil. They are more artistic. So then it grows and it pierces the covering of the material universe. And goes into the Brahman, Brahma Jyoti. So then you should be Anyabilas Tashunyam. I have no desire because the consciousness has gone outside of the material sphere into the light of Brahman. Then the person is chanting and their consciousness then goes to Paravyam Vaikuntha. So now you realize the opulence of God. And you have the awareness that uh, God is everywhere and in everything. Everything is to be respected. And then you go on chanting and the consciousness goes up to Golok Vrindavan. And just like a creeper is uh, attached to a tree, so now the creeper of your devotion becomes uh, attached to the lotus feet of Krishna. Это значит точно так же, как Лиана обвивает скло дерева, точно так же ваша Лиана клетность обвивает воздействие стопы. И затем вот это восприятие Айшвали, Господа, оно уходит. И такая джива осознает сладость, красоту Господа, его наткнулась. Если вы 200 лет назад вы это сказали простому фермеру, он полностью вас понял. Get the seed from the guru, give some water, be patient, it will grow and you taste the fruit of love of God. Рассказали бы фермеру такой вот аналогии, что посади семечку, поливай его каждый день, терпеливо жди, потом она даст фрукт, фрукт любви к Богу. But no, now no one understands Mason. No one understands Mason. А, но никто не понимает вот этой вот природы. How do you get the fruit? You just order it on Amazon. And it comes the next day. You just go to the supermarket. And just take it and pay with your credit card. There's no time involved. There's no effort involved. There's no nature involved. Но вот в таких вот покупках на Амазоне, в магазинах, а, как бы мы никак не задействуем а, природу и усилим какие-то приложения. So for the Поэтому так есть современные люди, у современных людей очень большое слово. So they they sit down to chant, они садятся и успевают. Think, ah, now I have to select the channel for my entertainment system. О, и думают, о, хочу поразвлекаться как-то. And they, it's cheating. Because instead of actually surrendering and becoming Shakti and completely surrendering to the vibration of the name, eh, you're outwardly chanting, but inwardly trying to entertain yourself with different speculations. So the, the, the um, intelligence in imagi imagination has two the aspects. One is not having faith that the name can manifest 
uh, himself, the form of Krishna, and two, a restlessness caused by addiction to wanting to be entertained continuously. То есть, если подвести итог всему вышесказанному, то у вот этого воображения есть две основные причины. Первое – это то, что мы просто не верим в силу святого имени, в этот власти шахте, что оно само все нам покажет и откроет. И второе – что мы очень привязаны к разным развлечениям. So one has to have some discipline. И нам нужно быть более дисциплинированы. Очень спокойны. Because everyone's going very fast in the wrong direction. So if you're going in the wrong direction, it doesn't matter how fast you're going, you're not getting to your goal. Yes. You're going away from your goal. So sit down, don't expect fireworks, just do what Guru has told you. Just do what Guru has told you. Listen, listen to the name. And if your mind is wandering somewhere else, bring it back. Practice doing this. И все, что вам, и все, что нужно делать, как практиковать, это садиться, спокойно медитировать, как Гуру Дев сказал. Не ожидайте так. Фирм я к волшебству пришел перед глазами, просто спокойно это примерно делайте. Точно, что Гуру Дев сказал. It's a balance. Это баланс. If you want to learn to walk a tightrope. Если вы хотите walking a tightrope. Tightrope. You know, in the circus they have a rope, and a person walks. No, it's definitely the rope is a straight line. Do you understand in the circus? Yes. So if you are, then you have to have balance to do that. You fall off. So fixing the mind on the mantra is like a balancing act. And and fixing the mind on the mantra is like a balancing act. So fixing the mind on the mantra is like a balancing act. So fixing the mind on the mantra is like a balancing act. So fixing the mind on the mantra is like a so we are very in an intoxicated state. If someone would drink a bottle of whiskey and then try to walk on the road, <laughs> they have no balance, they are intoxicated. So mainly everyone is very intoxicated by Rajam. So when they try to bring the mind in balance and, and connect with the mantra, they just fall off. You have to try to bring the mind back in. And because you have faith in the words of Guru, if you fix your mind fully, be surrendered to the holy name, then slowly, slowly, the light of Nalabas will come and dispel the darkness of bodily identification. And when the mind becomes quite steady, quite still, then you see the Lord of Sweet of But just like a person, if they had drank a bottle of whiskey, when they try to balance, they fall again and again. After some time, if they become sober, then they can do it. So it takes some time for us to become a sober person. If the person is uh, thinking, he's drunk, he's thinking I have to walk on this road. So then he cannot, after a few hours, think, well, let me just have a little bit of whiskey. Он может говорить через какое-то время, хочу немножко виски. 
So this is the problem. We are we want to become sober, but we go again into the sense gratification. Да, то есть как человек он хочет стать трезвым, но постоянно возвращается немножко еще допить. Также мы хотим наконец успокоиться, но постоянно к чувственному удовольствию возвращаемся. So this is why at the time of initiation, along with the mantra, then Guru always also says there are four regulative principles. That means don't get drunk again. И это значит, когда мы принимаем мантру, мы должны следовать четырем регулирующим принципам. И что это для чего эти принципы, что они не становились вот такими вот объединенными этими значениями? Because the mantra works, but if you do, you impede your ability to experience the power of the mantra if you break these principles. А потому что мантра она всегда могущественна, но если нарушаете вот эти вот правила, то вы затрудняете собственное восприятие, не будет. So it's very important to have a strong sangha in the words of Guru. Because the, the things which are very valuable are rare things are expensive. So to realize God is quite rare. Not so many people have the realization. So it's um, somewhat expensive. Потому что это нечто очень ценное и дорогое. You have to invest. Это значит, что вы должны инвестиции вложить в большие. So you only invest in something that you believe in. Но вы можете вложить только в то, во что вы верите. So if will say, oh, give me all of your money, and in five days I'll give you a million dollars. It's a very good investment. It's just like that. Oh, no, no. Если кто-нибудь подойдет, то not so foolish. Если кто-нибудь подойдет к вам и скажет, слушай, дай мне там всего лишь пять долларов, я тебе через неделю там миллиона дам. Он скажет, нет, спасибо, я подожду очень, я думаю, что это. So to invest requires conviction. И вот это вложение, это значит, что должно быть уверенность. So it's important to hear again and again. From Guru and pure saints. Очень важно слушать снова и снова Гуру и уделять своему чисто классическому образу. And understand the subject. И понимать тему. When you understand it, then you think, oh, yes, I, I know that this is a good investment. And then you invest your time. И когда вы слушаете подход наставления, вы вдохновляетесь и понимаете, да, это хорошая инвестиция. Должен вложить в это свое время, свои силы. Try to understand all these philosophical principles. Our organization is called Chaitanya Academy. For the study of consciousness. Because Chaitanya is also the name of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because Chaitanya means consciousness. Читание это одно из наших читаний, но это и наше читание Махапрабху также читание это значит сознание. So in this study, you are the scientist. И когда вы обучаетесь, вы свое сознание тренируете. And you are also the laboratory. Вы как вы как лаборатория. And you are also the discovery. И вы что открываете? Вы как первый открываете? And for this discovery, you will get the Nobel Prize. И благодаря вот этим открытиям получится Нобелевская премия. Прежде. So you have to be aware of this, that. Just as a scientist is making research to discover something very valuable, so every day you sit and you are studying. You are your Japa means you are making the internal research. И также как исследователь в лаборатории он постоянно проводит исследования, чтобы достичь результата. Также мы каждый день садимся и воспеваем, повторяем святое имя. Это и есть наше исследование. And by this you discover, make the greatest discovery. In the history of the human race. И благодаря этому вы у вас будет вы сделаете величайшее открытие в истории человечества, самое ценное получится. First to discover that I am a spiritual being, I am not a material person who is subject to death. И первое первое открытие в результате таких поисков то, что я не тело и я никак не связан с этим телом, которое умрет. And then the next level of discovery is that my soul has a relationship with God. И второй уровень реализации то, что моя душа связана с Господом. And then to actually activate that relationship. И третий уровень это когда уже осознаете эти отношения, какие отношения с Господом. We fixed on your goal. 
and then take all the necessary steps to attain it. It doesn't require imagination. <coughs> One can uh, visualize uh, the form of vision. <coughs> because you are not overextending. <coughs> overextending. <coughs> overreaching. <coughs> the reason is this, because until the form of Krishna awakens in the heart, the qualities of Krishna will not manifest and his associates and pastimes. <coughs> if you try to visualize the associates and pastimes, you're going ahead of the crown, of the sequence of possibility. <coughs> so, to help us, Focus on the form of the Krishna. The Krishna appears in the form of the deity. So you should not uh, imagine, but by daily coming and oh, very peacefully, just allowing your gaze to rest upon the deity while the kirtan is going on, while the archi is going on, then Krishna himself will then Krishna himself will make the sanskar in your heart, which is not an imagination. And then when you chant you, you can bring to your consciousness that impression that was made by Krishna himself in his Archa Vigra form. So, uh, there are many beautiful verses describing Krishna. And you can chant and stop chanting for a moment and remember the verse and then meditate. And, but in, if you do that in this state, it is not really the, the smaran. But because the mind will tend to go in the material subject, sub, subject just to bring it towards a pure, a more pure deliberation, a consideration you can do. So when Guru Devi gave, he told him, yes, you can. You can think of a verse. But don't be carried away that you need Lila Smaran. That's That is spontaneous coming inside. Гурдей said you can uh, do parikrama. You are chanting, then you can aim at Bhagavan. Give pronounce at Govinda Kund. Apsara Kund, Shama Kund, Rana Kund. So it's not perfect. <coughs> But if anyway, if your mind is anyway going to be wandering everywhere, let your mind wander around Vrindavan. Because if you can't stop your mind from wandering, if it doesn't wander around Vrindavan, then it will wander around Paris. <laughs> so, I'm speaking about the ideal. A first move fully surrenders and then mind is focused on that and then root go everything will come. But before that stage, if it's unbearable for you to really uh, uh, control the mind, if it's unbearable, then you can have some thoughts. You can about Parakrama, about the deity, about Sanharikata. This is much better 
than just the, the material thoughts. Uh, Because uh, the mind is like a wild horse. But the wild horse can be trained, but they cannot, they will not respond positively to uh, some any abrupt or extreme transformations in behavior from the state of full restlessness to the state of full control. They'll rebel against that. And so you can uh, gradually give your mind you can chant and think of some thoughts of parakrama or some kata or a verse like this, slowly, slowly, go on from here and here, but gradually you'll come to the point of focusing only on the name and then the name itself will take over and do everything. И как бешеная лошадь, когда ее тренируют, невозможно, чтобы лошадь сразу успокоилась, она постоянно становится, то успокоится, то снова взвесится. И точно так же, и точно так же святое имя. Вы воспеваете, можете совершать эту парикраму, подху прометовать, но когда-то фокусироваться именно на святом имени, вы увидите, как святое имя в какой-то момент проявится и сделает все само. We have a scripture about Prada Maya, no? Prada Maya is the passion of Yoga Maya, who covers it down here. So... Prada Maya is in Navadri. It's not in Brindavan? No. The, just as in Brindavan there is Radha and Krishna, but in Navadri it is Mahaprabhu. So just as there is Yoga Maya in Brindavan, the same yoga maya of Navadvip is called Prada maya. So, some, because I, I read it in, in Mahalini Swami book, you know? It's coming from, I think, Milan Mahamabrita, but he's uh, appreciating Sri Dham Dham. He is called Prada maya. So, okay, some misconception. But the point is, <coughs> anyhow, yoga maya is in charge of, you know, cover the dam with the kids, and, you know, all well. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. И йога майя покрывает же Вриндаван, и на каждом из этих эти свинюшки там. И джамуна, полюбуша, и все эти вещи, да? Но сейчас это снижается, да? Но контаминация становится хуже, да? Даже на Сарасе. Как мы можем сказать, что это еще йога майя, создавая эту хаву здесь? Йога майя, на самом деле, открывает или конфликт истину. Reveals or conceals the truth. And a Mahamaya presents the falsehood. <coughs> so the, the Dham is here. It is covered by Yoga Maya. But Yoga Maya is not making the trash and the pigs and the drains. Mahamaya is making Но Yoga Maya не создает там мусор, свинок, и все такое, это создает Mahamaya. So yes, it's increasing. Mahamaya is doing that. There's three gunas. That's the three gunas. So you don't think that the yoga maya is making the trash? You So we should know the functions. Yoga maya, the internal potency, covers the truth or reveals the truth. And the uh, Mahamaya uh, reveals the false, the uh, material illusions. Ultimately, actually, there's only one Shakti. So you could say Maha, Yoga Maya does everything in one but we use the terminology Yoga Maya and Mahamaya related to what function they do. Just like for an engineer in a power station, there's just electricity. But uh, for the person who is 
in their home that electricity is sometimes heating in their stove or freezing in the refrigerator. Um, so the same energy is having different effects. So Krishna has one energy, uh, but it manifests the spiritual world and the material, and then there's a name according to that function. Точно так же у Господа есть разные энергии, которые делают одно и другое, и мы называем их разными.